that I see, every time I come here, we see new things. They block those off Sunday, but then they change them around again. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I come in here, we've got fans all over the place. And I'm telling you, we're serving under a great man and, and his wife. And um, there's some great things that are taking place. We also want to thank those that are fasting. Those that fasted, if you've already broken it, that's cool. And if you're still uh, fasting until the service, that's great also. And that's what uh, makes our church uh, powerful, uh, is the people that are praying in the mornings and also fasting. And Thursday is our fasting day. Praise the Lord. Okay, I need to, needed to get that off. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to be continuing our series on the whole life. And I'll be doing the second installment um, this evening, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. We know these scriptures. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, which uh, Brother George covered last week. My installment will be, I'll be taking care of the kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now, I know many of you have heard sermons on the fruits of the Spirit, yes? If you've been a Christian for a while, you've heard series upon series, you've heard teachings upon teachings, but our aim and our goal in tackling this uh, issue once again is that we want to have you understand that it's not just behavior modification, understand that, but it's more that we can show this world and to one another that we're the children of God. It's not so much what I'm going to show the fruits of the Spirit because, you know, that's what we do. And it's an outcome of the indwelling of the Spirit of God in our lives. Uh, but church, there has to be a difference in our lives now. Because He lives in us. The Spirit of God dwells in us. Uh, the fruits of the Spirit should be made manifest in our lives uh, to show people that there's a change in our lives. We have to. It, it's part of what takes place when we become Christians. So let me start my clock first. Let me start this. You know, There's so many ways that we can do a message. We can go topical. We can go illustrative, we can go different ways, uh, we can do our three-point uh, uh, message, but when I was putting this together, let me just draw from the well of my heart, from the well of my experience, and also uh, just to kind of speak to you and not at you. Okay, so let me start this segment by saying this, some of the attributes of God. God, He's the creator of the universe, we know that. He's all just, He's omniscient, He's omnipresent, He's perfect, He's immutable, does not change. He's all loving. He's an all just God. He is Elohim, our creator. He's Jehovah, our Lord God. He is El Shaddai. Amy Grant used to sing El Shaddai. I'm listening to some of the phonetics, and I'm not a Greek and Hebrew scholar, Pastor Danny, uh, but I guess it's pronounced El Shaddai. He's our supplier. Adonai, he's our master. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is Jehovah Rophe. I've always pronounced it Rofa, Rafa. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Jehovah Makadesh, our sanctifier. He's Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. Jehovah Shalom, he's our peace. And he's also the Lord of hosts. Thank you, Brother Richard. Isn't he the awesomest guy? God is a God of order. He's a God of second chances. He's a God of restoration. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of justice. We've coined the, 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 word, the, the phrase God of war or a man of war. Ephesians, Exodus rather 15, 3 says, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. He's a God of righteousness. We know God by these terms, and, but we also need to understand that he's also a God of love. 
Because he is love. 1 John 4.16 says, God is love. And whoever abides or lives in God, and God abides, and God abides or lives in him. And depending on what side you're on, this love word has become to be an abused terminology. There is that hyper grace, hyper. It's over the top. And many have messed this up. Because it is over the top. We've heard many things regarding people that are hyper grace and it's all about grace. And I would like to say, and again from my experience, I'll pour my heart to you. It's messed it up for those who are longing to need that God is not just a legalist. We know him. By he is a God of war. He's a God of order. He's a God of righteousness. And, you know, depending on which side you're on, you know, for those that make poorly worded, make fun of hyper grace, it's like, man... There are people that still need to know that he's a good God, he's a God of love, he's a merciful God, and there's another side to God aside from what people, especially these last days, uh, are saying. One of the main points that we would like to bring across to you in doing these series uh, is there are fruits of the spirit that should be imminent in our lives because we serve God, we serve him, and we want to be like him. Hear me. We want to be like our father, don't we? We want to be like God. We want to be like Jesus. Now, the father's love, which includes kindness and goodness, it's exemplified in the story of the prodigal son. The parable is found in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. I will not take the time to read it to you. But we know a, a quick synopsis. Here's a young man, the younger of the two brothers. He takes his inheritance and he squanders it on, uh, one translation says, riotous living. He squanders it on that type of living, debauchery. What we as Christians would call it is all-out worldliness. Sinfulness for us who are indwelt by the Spirit of God. By the way, the word prodigal not only means one who returns from an absence, it also means one who spends or gives lavishly and foolishly. So this prodigal son spent lavishly, foolishly. But I believe we can all agree that in this parable, the father in this story is likened unto our heavenly father. Can we all agree to that? It does not need a rocket scientist or someone that is into hermeneutics. Uh, we can just see the love of the father in this story. And the father in the story, he did not refuse his son when he came back. Are there any prodigals here? God showed kindness and goodness. This father exuded that kindness uh, and goodness. And the Bible says the uh, first thing he did was he put the best robe. He said, put the best robe on him, on my son, signifying royalty once again. He messed up, uh, but man, put on the best robe, not, not the one that's tattered, not the one that has holes, uh, but the best robe signifying royalty. If you've ever been a prodigal, if you've ever mm, slid back, so to speak, uh, didn't God, his kindness and his goodness, uh, didn't he put the robe back on us? Uh, we are called uh, still his people. I, I was a prodigal. God saved at a young age, and at some point in my life, I 
may not have as lavishly or foolishly spent, but I did leave God. Second thing that takes place is they put a ring on him, signifying once again authority. Giving him back the responsibilities, back to his position. For those of us that are prodigals, for those of you that have been in this journey, as you look at your life now, God has given you back authority. God has given you uh, influence over people because God, he exudes kindness, uh, he exudes uh, goodness. That's who he is and that's who we need to be as well. He put on sandals upon him, uh, and they brought up the fattened calf, not the skinny one, not the one that's all emaciated, all, you know, sucked up. The fattened calf. God showed his goodness uh, and his kindness. Uh, church, uh, didn't God take us back? Several times. Not only, did, not, not only did some perhaps left once or twice or turned their back against on God once or twice or three times, uh, several times, uh, but in his goodness and in his kindness, he took us back. This is what we want to bring to you. That it's just not, let's just put on kindness and goodness, let's just on patience now because of the fruit. No, we want to be like our father. We not only want to be like our father, but we also want to be like Jesus, our savior and redeemer. Back in the 90s, I don't know if some of you guys were even born in the 90s. Back in the 90s, there were, we were a part of a, I don't know if we would call it a movement. Everybody was wearing the bracelet WWJD. Remember that? And it stood for, what would Jesus do? Supposedly reminding us, what would Jesus do at this instance? Not only did we take it on bracelets, we put it on uh, hats and we put it on uh, uh, t-shirts. What would Jesus do signifying that we should be like Jesus? Uh, we should do the things that Jesus would do. Jesus says these words, John 14 verse 9. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And Jesus... Exemplifying the Father, he exemplifies once again goodness and kindness in the story of the woman who was caught in adultery. John 8 verses 1 to 11. Let's read this one. John 8 verses 1 to 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple area and all the people were coming to him, and he sat down at big, and began teaching them. This is morning now, guys. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery in the morning. And after placing her in the center of the courtyard, bad enough, she's caught in adultery, now she's brought in the midst of the courtyard. Let me digress real quick. For those of you that have ever been embarrassed in your life, I have a friend huh, who was brought in front of the courtyard. Things took place, and he was brought on this stage, on a church stage. The leaders vilified, maligned, went at him. And some other people on the stage. I get a phone call from Puerto Rico. I'm in Puerto Rico. <laughs> There's George. <sighs> Panting like I, I can feel the tenseness. I can feel the pain. I can feel, Pastor George, <sighs> this is what happened right now. Imagine being brought in front of your peers right here. Everybody just... Imagine the feeling of this woman brought in the center of the courtyard. They said to him, teacher, this woman has been caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, 
Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? Now they were saying this to test him so that they may have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground. When they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now when they heard this, they began leaving one by one, beginning with the older ones. I wonder why the older ones first. You guys think about that? Sometimes the older ones are a little bit wiser, and then it's the little ones. The younger ones are like, yeah, come on, it's it. Let's just go for it. Come on. <laughs> they began leaving one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone in the one where he wa she was, in the center of the courtyard. And straightening up, Jesus said to her, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, do not sin any longer. What was Jesus showing? If we wore the bracelets WWJD or it's still in our minds, uh, what Jesus did was he showed great kindness and goodness to this woman. Again, I reiterate, I, I, I repeat myself, this is what we want, want, want you guys to understand. You've heard many, many sermons and series and teachings and what have you on the fruits of the Spirit. They're just not for our behavioral change. It should be that these fruits now should be imminent in our lives because we've been saved now for a while. There's a quote that I love. It says, be kind always. You never know what someone is going through. Isn't that good? Yes. Be kind always. You never know what someone is going through. I'm feeling that one. Jesus, once again, he exemplified goodness and kindness of the cross. Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, then, Je then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. One translation says, they do not know what they are doing. I'm not coming against the word of God. I'm not coming against Jesus. But y'all know. Some people do know what they're doing. And they still do it anyhow. But! Woke y'all up. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And it's true. Some people say things, some people do things. I was like, you just don't know what you're doing to me right now. You're killing me. And sometimes they just don't know, and that's when the fruit of the Spirit needs to now blossom in our lives. The ball is on our court now. Now we're to show goodness and kindness at those moments. Better quality of life comes through better quality decisions. At that time, we can just let them have it too, or we can have better quality decisions and say, no, I'm going to move in the fruits of the spirit that I'm bearing in my life, and you will show kindness to those people and goodness. And when we're not, is it just me? Don't you want to hang people by their toenails sometimes? I'm like, you just don't know what you're doing to me right now. I want to hang you by your toenails, by your fingernails. And then again, this is what we're saying. It's just not a, you know, it's just not a behavioral modification. It's like, well, what would Jesus do at this time? What would God the Father do? It's easy at times to hack away at people, but true maturity comes when we're wanting to be like the Father, wanting to be like Jesus, showing goodness and kindness at those very moments of our lives. I'd like to say this, don't go for the lie. It may sound and seem like a lot of people are talking negatively, badly, I'll use the word preposterously about you. You ever feel that? Everybody be talking about me. 
You come in, it's like, man, you can feel it. Like, did that just hit me right now? But, let me give you this. It's really not everybody. It's not even a majority. It's just a minority. A few. They may. Maybe. They are. But sometimes we get so wrapped up because we're hearing a lot of noises, then our heart begins to just change. There's an illustration that I've read, and there was a farmer who would be just, he's going crazy every night because in his pond, he'd be hearing ribbit, 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 just goes on, went on for a while. And so they dredged up this pond thinking like, man, I'm going to find me a bunch of frogs. I'm going to get rid of all these frogs. You know what they found? They just found one frog. Causing all that ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Isn't that how life is sometimes? You just think like everybody's talking about you. Could be one person. Could be two. But it's not everybody. This is not when we have to be like the Father. Be like Jesus. And show goodness and kindness. One quote for you. People may not remember all the things that you say. All the sage, sage means... The, the wise advice that you have, but people, they may, they may not rem remember all that, but people will remember you by how you made them feel. And I will end with that later on. Remember that. People will remember you by how you made them feel. I was talking to Pastor Danny Sunday. And then I start going, getting going, and they're like, pretty soon I'm like, man, am I, rant am I, am I ranting? Am I, I think I'm ranting right now. And I'm like, and I'm going to speak on gentleness and goodness. There are times when we can be affected by a noise or two. But this is when now we need to allow not just a, uh, again, I, I, I like that word, behavioral modification. It's just like, not, not what would my father do at this time? What, how can I show that I can be like my father? How can I show that I can be like my Savior, Jesus? In doing so, we need to yield to the Holy Spirit. So we will yield, produce the fruit of gentleness and goodness. As we yield to the Spirit, maturity comes upon us. The fruits of the Spirit becomes evident upon our lives and we become more and more Christ-like. We desperately, desperately need the help of the Holy Spirit to do this. Within our own selves, we will not be so loving, we will not be so joyous, we will not be so peaceful, we will not be so kind, we're definitely not going to be gentle, we're definitely going to be long-suffering or patient. So we need to yield, we need to yield to the Holy Spirit. How many are God-loving people here? How many are yielded to the Holy Spirit? Listen to this. Today, people are praised by how many followers they have on social media, isn't it? I've got a thousand, I've got a couple of thousand. Uh, are there anyone that have a million? I, I, I don't know, I really don't go into social media a whole lot. Uh, but you know, people are praised by how many followers they have. Let me bring a clarity to that. It's not so much a matter of how many following you have or how many are following you, it's a matter of who you are following. You can have a lot of people following you, but the main thing is, who are you following? Who are you yielded to? And if we're following Jesus, if we're yielded to the Holy Spirit, that's when the evidence of the fruits of the Spirit will take place. 
Galatians 5, 16 to 17. But I say, walk by the Spirit or yield to the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. The flesh does not want to be kind and gentle. The flesh wants to be like the prodigal son, wants to pate. Wants to go some squandering, uh, you know, things and lavishly just, you know, that, that's what the flesh would like to do. And this is why, once again, you've heard series on these guys. But I'm telling you, we're going to have such a great altar call tonight. I, I, I believe it. If you're really open, we're going to have such one of the best altar calls ever. Years in the Lord, years in Christianity does not always equate to maturity. Years of being saved does not necessarily mean a person is mature. It's how much we yield. Notice that I said we, that is inclusive of me. It is how much we yield and continue to yield and constantly yield to the Holy Spirit who gives us the strength and the power to change, to become Christ-like, to be God-like, to become like our Father. Once again, there it goes. Uh, be ye perfect. Go ahead and keep it, Pastor Danny. Be ye perfect. I said this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye perfect or mature as your Father in heaven is perfect. Do you believe with me? Would you agree with me that God is mature? He's perfect. He doesn't have mood swings. <laughs> Jesus says these words. No, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 rather says, And walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fla fragrant aroma. We want to become like our Father. We want to become like Jesus. You know why? Because we're going to be the recipients of gentleness and goodness and kindness. We've received from God His kindness. How many can say amen to that? How many have received His forgiveness? How many have received His gentleness? How many have received this goodness? Can you look back at, as to how many times in your walk with him that God has been so good to you? Can you look back as to how many times he's been gentle and kind? One of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 8, 4. What is man that you are mindful of him? Another translation says... What are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings, that you should care for them? Who am I? Who are we that God should even consider us and think about us and lavish his love? He's not just a God of righteousness and, in, you know, just, just, you know. You guys know what I'm saying, guys? And that's like become a bad thing now. It's like, man, you know, I, I also need to know that I'm loved by God. I'm not going to get to heaven by my works. I'm not going to get to heaven by, you know, if I'm tardy or not. If he was that thunderous God of justice and war and everything else, then who are we that God would lavish his love, extend his love, his goodness, his grace, his forgiveness upon you and I? There's another side to God that we need to also... Emulate and show people. God could have smashed us many times. <laughs> Just like we want to smash people. Are we getting this across now? It's not just like, let me just change my behavior. It's like, let me be like my father. Let me be like my savior, my redeemer. Guys, easily. God could smash us. God can, you know, really do a number on us. Like we want to do a number on people. I have been a recipient of God's goodness. I have seen God's mercy. I've, 
I, I've been lavished by his love. I've been, I've been shown his kindness, his mercy, his goodness. But not only have I been a recipient of kindness and goodness from God, I've also been a recipient of kindness and goodness from people who bear those fruits. This is what this, I don't even want to call it a message, this is what this talk to you is all about. I've been a recipient from God, but I've also been a recipient from kind men and women. People, have you ever been made like a five-year-old by when someone talked to you where you're 50 years old? I'm like, man, you just don't know how you made me feel. We know the golden rule, don't do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. So speak to people like you would want to be spoken to. Don't speak about people like you don't want to be spoken to about. I'm not done, but I want music, Pla uh, musicians, if you can, maybe a platform. I'm not done. If you guys can help me out here real quick. God desires that we bear the fruits of the Spirit, and we're covering gentleness and kindness tonight. Thereby, others can be recipients. They can eat from the fruits that we have. Now, hear me. This is... I want to pour my heart to you. When we were given the responsibility to, I hate to use the word, take over San Pedro, given the responsibility to take it, uh, the San Pedro church, we were shown kindness and goodness. Taking over a church, taking over the responsibility, rather, like Pastor Danny and Sister Sabrina has, guys, you... you, you you will never know how they feel until you become a pastor and put on those shoes. Never. One of the hardest things, and I, I, I believe, is taking, you know, given the responsibility of this type of a church. Um, we went to that church, and when you go to a new church, you never know, like our brother said, if people like you or not. <laughs> it's like scary. One of the scariest things, man. Really, really, really. And one of the sisters there at that church, who happens to be here tonight, said these words. <laughs> I don't think they knew yet that that was one of the hardest moves that we've made. That was my 16th move since I've gotten saved. Some of you haven't even moved out of your house. I've moved 16 times. It went from, I think, a month, we'll give you a month to move, and then it went to like two weeks. For a family of four living in a house in that community for eight years, we had to pack all that belonging, two weeks, and we couldn't tell anybody because, you know, how social media goes out, and it's like, it was just the two of us just packing, guys. It was so hard that... I didn't sleep for two days, two full days, just packing, because nobody could help us. Stockton couldn't help us. Nobody could help us, just incognito doing this thing. 10 o'clock, because we had to be here by Friday. 10, 11 o'clock, Thursday night, it's like, we're just shoving things, throwing things. My son said, Dad, just go. Forget these things, just go. And we rented the longest U-Haul that you can ever have. And I didn't realize at some point, Climbing that grapevine, and some of you will be climbing that grapevine next week. Climbing, going up and down that grapevine, I was going about 35, 45 miles an hour because I was just nodding out, man. And to where I was told, did you know that even the semis were passing you up? You were going that slow. We go to San Pedro, arrive on a Friday, start service on a Sunday clicking, going again. And then one of the scissors who we never met, never knew, said these words, Pastor, we're going to cook you, I'm going to cook you 
home-cooked meals for two weeks. Every night. Two full weeks. Every night, homemade, none of that, you know, fast food stuff, homemade, baby. And she can cook. I'll never forget that. Kindness and goodness. Listen to this. Same person, same couple. When we found out and we told the church that Ren, my late wife, was diagnosed with cancer, things were getting bad. Listen to this. You want to talk about being like your father or your savior? One Sunday they said, Pastor, they both came all jazz, like smiling, ear to ear, beaming. I'm serious. They were like beaming, like, Pastor, we want to give you something. Okay. They gave us this little box about yay big, like that. And they said, we want to give this to you. I'm telling you, beaming, teeth, ear to ear. Gave us this little box and said, you know, this is for you. This is our change box, I think is what they said. This is our change box. Listen to this. This is so... <sighs> says, okay, thank you. We were going through all kinds of stuff at that time, and, you know, I did not open it in front of your eyes, and if you give me a gift, I won't open it in front of your eyes anyways, in front of you. And so I went home. I, I don't know when I opened it. It might have even been a day or two afterwards. And uh, listen to this, man. I, I just... I opened up the box, this, their change box, and it contained $10 bills. Change box. Five? Five and ten? Five dollars. Five dollars. Makes more sense. They said it was your change box when they would find five dollars here, five dollars there. You know, they would just put it in a box. I started counting these $5 change box. <laughs> you know how much they amounted to their change box? Close to $1,200. In $5 bills that they stored for themselves, But one of the darkest moments of my life here is God using people that have the fruits of kindness and goodness. It's just not a behavioral thing. It's in them. And it's in you. It's in us. It's not just about, well, let me just change my behavior now. Well, how about let me be like my father. Let me be me like Jesus. Can you imagine 12 Hundred dollars and five dollar bills. I don't know how long it took them to save that. I can forget bad words. I can forget when people maligned me and made me feel. I will never be able to forget how they made me feel. And you and I, we have this capacity. We're saved, we're Christians. We're blood-bought. We're about our Father's business. But it's time now that you and I, we show goodness and kindness to people. David says these words, the man that is after God's own very heart. He says, who else in the household of Saul can I show kindness to for the sake of Jonathan. Can I encourage you? If we are about our Father's business, if we are God-like, if we are Christian-like, if we've been saved for any amount of time, for especially for those of us that have been saved for a long time, I want you to go purposely look for someone, show them goodness and kindness because it's who you are. You are saved. You're a Christian. You're God-like. You're Christ-like. Go out of your way. Let me get my word. 
kind of like Pastor Tom, I like words. Logo five. Logo Phil. Go and intentionally, go and intentionally show goodness and kindness to someone. Can you do that? I'm ending. I don't know. You know, it was my time. We're still going to have an altar call. Again, I bear my heart to you. I moved into my sister's house, which is a quarter of my house as well. I'm part owner. My daughter and I have moved in there since January. This woman have given to me and my family throughout the years. I can honestly say this. If I would have accumulated all the amount of money that they've given, she would have, I would have probably bought two brand new cars with how she's helped us out in the ministry. And you know what she said the other day? It didn't really stab me because it didn't really, it woke me up. I said, you know what, George? You haven't bought me anything yet. You've not even bought me a burger. Fix that real quick. The next day, bought her burger, holo holo, all the Filipino food. I go, here you go, sis. Point is, there are so many people that have shown kindness and goodness to us. We've not even sought them out. Young adults, when was the last time you took out mom and you just told mom, mom, I thank you. Dad, Pastor Danny, thank you for all the things that you go through. Tia, Tio, thank you. Can you, as you bow your heads and you close your eyes, in doing this message, I, there was a moment, there was a day or two, where I purposely just sat and thought of and all the things, all the kindness, the goodness that God had shown in my life. Again, from the past years in ministry, people that have lavished love upon me, kindness and goodness. And I want all of us here tonight, heads bowed, eyes closed. I want you to really think. I want you to really, really take some time to think of God's goodness and kindness that he's shown you, what people have shown you. And I would want you after I make an appeal for those that are unsaved, you're not saved, you don't know the goodness and the kindness of God. I'm telling you, Jesus exemplifies goodness and kindness. He died on the cross for you so you and I can have a more abundant life. If you're here in this place and you've known about a God, you've known about a Jesus, but you need to go on with your life, you need some help tonight, not just more than just help. God loves you so much. If that's you, would you kindly lift up your hand, even those that are watching online. Jesus loves you. Anyone here tonight, you have, don't have a relationship with God? Anyone here tonight? Uh, with all my being, man, I... I can I invite you to this altar? Take a bow, take a seat, take a knee. But can we all come to this altar and say, God, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. I want to be like you. Jesus, I thank you for all the times that you've been good to me. Can you come here tonight and just think about the goodness that people have showed you and thank those people in your mind and go out of your way sometime at some point this week, next week, the weeks to come, the months to come. That you seek them out. That you purposely. God has done so much. Can you just even take time out for your wife and your husband tonight and just say, man, thank you for your kindness and goodness. I say this, young men, young women, I've been in your shoes. Well, I just took mom and dad for granted. I took life for granted, even being in the home, just took it for granted. But it's time now that we just show them some goodness, some kindness. Thank them. 
Abba, Father. I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. And I thank you for all the people that you brought upon my life. Honor them. Bless them, Father. Give them back what was given to me.